Hello guys, Nato Ace here, and I want to give my thoughts on the Capcom reveal. And of course, it's as expected, it is fighting game related. So let me explain what happened here for somebody who's not in tune to the FGC. So last week there was a timer in a Capcom website, and it was supposed to count down by a week. And of course, the funny thing is that the countdown also, it was conjunction with the Capcom Pro Tour 2021 season finale. So it's basically, if you don't know what the countdown is, it is about Capcom fighting games. So there was a lot of people that kind of made some different guesses. Some are funny, some are maybe something different. Some said could have been a Resident Evil Village DLC. It could be something Mega Man. I mean, that could be a miracle could be Breath of Fire, could be whatever franchise, but of course some people say hopefully it's Capcom getting bought by Sony to some extent, I know that's a joke, or Nintendo, you know, because of the acquisition story, but of course chances are because Capcom Pro Tour season finale, and then it started in six days, and then of course if you know the league, there was a thing called Street Fighter 6, and yes, the revelation of the countdown is Capcom fighting game celebration. Celebrating the 35th anniversary of Street Fighter, but as well as celebrating Capcom's fighting game catalog. But the biggest one here is, of course, like I said, it is Street Fighter 6. So finally, the FGC went extremely goo goo gaga, including Miles 923, Best for Arcade, Justin Wong, you name it, any FGC, they really went extreme. Goo goo gaga. So yeah, so they showed a teaser trailer and an announcement of an announcement. So to some extent, some people are not happy about that, but you know, it is what it is because they did it with Maggie Man a long time ago. Backstory was somebody from Capcom said they made an announcement of Mega Man and all of a sudden they made an announcement of there is no Mega Man, but <laughs> that's a different story there. But yes, because what it is, is it's a TV trailer of Hot Ryu. Yes, so Ryu now is Hot Ryu, finally. Probably that's his default. And a new design for Luke. Yes, the final character for Street Fighter V. And I'll give my backstory a bit about Luke there. But if you want to know about my thoughts on Luke, links in the description box on my Luke showcase for Street Fighter V. So Luke has a new outfit. And then, of course... If you don't know, according to the director for Street Fighter V, he is the future of Street Fighter. Is considered the main character for Street Fighter VI. So I want to give a gist of look and what's the big deal about that one. Because for people who don't know, is that Street Fighter V wasn't even supposed to have a fifth season, but of course they gave Ono a director role and see how he can do with Street Fighter VI. And of course, it came out bad. He wanted to be a tag team, and people said, this is utterly crap. To a point, the Capcom said, yeah, you're done. So because of it, they had to have something at least to keep the Street Fighter fan happy. So with that said, what they did was that the final character for Street Fighter V is a teaser, and it was basically an original character created by the director and the producer of Street Fighter. If you don't know who they are, they actually been working since 2016 for Street Fighter 5, but at a time, they really didn't have like sort of a control. Mostly Ono was the one that has the final word, but of course, when Ono's out, they took over. So that particular character, Luke, basically was the director's personal created character. That's why I'm like kind of weird, Luke, American, whatever. I don't know what the story behind it, but the whole point is that character was originally made by the vision of the director of Street Fighter 5 and supposed to be the main character for Street Fighter 6. So from what I understand, maybe I'm just guessing is that they probably already been developing 6, but at the same time, they had some people, maybe not a lot of people are doing Street Fighter 5. And they said, well, let's introduce a character for the future of Street Fighter, which is 6, Luke. So there you go. A bit of backstory of what Luke is. So, what does it mean? What's going on? So, first, like I said, the teaser, they're gonna reveal more at summer of 2022. So, it could be at E3 of 2022 to some extent, 
or it could be also EVO of 2022. So, of course, the big thing they're going to say is roll back netcode. So that's the biggest thing for the FGC. Oh, no rollback, no buy. Well, welcome to the neighborhood. Remember, no dub, no buy. Censorship, no buy. No my, no buy. No rollback, no buy. Welcome to the neighborhood. So anyway, with that said, that's the biggest there is rollback. Graphic-wise, it is sort of a little bit anime-ish, but still realistic. So it is a different graphics than Street Fighter V. But of course, if you know the history of Street Fighter V, there was a lot of obstacle with that one. I mean, you gotta give credit to Ono because of it. And if you wanna know more about it, another link on the description box by Matt McMuscle. He did a video about Street Fighter V, The Hurdles. And the gist of it is, if you ever wonder why it was a PlayStation 4 exclusive, because Ono had a different idea for Street Fighter V. Apparently, it went south, didn't work, so they wasted all that money and resource. So, apparently, somebody from Capcom, business advisor said, well, you gotta team up with someone. So they talked to Sony because Capcom and Sony have great relationship. So they said, okay, well, chip in, we'll find Street Fighter V. So that's why it's a PlayStation exclusive. <laughs> so you gotta give credit to Ono that one. And I'm gonna talk about Ono after this because it is gonna be an interesting what it is. So, like I said, rollback to key thing, roster to key thing to some extent. So, is it going to be once again like a surface like Street Fighter V? Like throughout the season, there will be more characters adding in because that wasn't really bad to some extent. But yeah, there were some hurdles with Street Fighter V, and that'll be a different video because I want to give my thoughts on. I shouldn't done this since February 2021, celebrating its fifth anniversary of Street Fighter V, but I had other things to do, so I'm going to talk about that in a different video so that's easier there. So, roll back and Ross is going to be the key thing there. And of course, Street Fighter 6 is going to be the first Street Fighter post Ono. So Ono's not going to be involved because if you know what happened, they left Capcom due to, well, a lot of mishap and to some extent that Capcom weren't happy with him. So he got the window set. Again, links in the description box for this type of situation there. And like I said, a lot of people blame Ono for the bad direction of Street Fighter. But I have to defend Ono. If it wasn't for Ono, there wouldn't be Street Fighter. He pushed that with Street Fighter 4. He redeemed Street Fighter, the franchise, because 3 wasn't that good. Of course, it was a different story. Again, credit to Matt McMuscle. So he tried to redeem it with Street Fighter 4, the music, the characters. And then later on, he's trying to uh, integrate Street Fighter 3 and Street Fighter 4. And then he actually did some partially good job on Street Fighter V. Of course, post Ono on Street Fighter V, the director and the producer took over, and the direction was much better, in my opinion. But you can't really blame Ono for quote-unquote ruining Street Fighter the franchise. Yeah, there were some hurdles. Street Fighter Cross Tekken wasn't that good. Marvel Infinite, to some extent. He wasn't really that heavily involved, but Gotta blame Capcom for the low budget, and of course, Disney. And then, of course, like I said, in Street Fighter V, there were some hurdles, but in the long run, by the fifth season, it got better. But again, a lot of the FGC, they were like, ruining the game to a point. I, I seen it in the comment. Like, seriously, like, they hate the game, whatever, potato, potato. For me personally, as of right now, Street Fighter V is my favorite Street Fighter game. It's easy, it's fun. For the casual gamer, not FGC. Whatever. So anyway, again, that's why I like Street Fighter V. It's easy, and I think that's also sort of the problem why people are complaining is that you make it easy to the casual, you're guaranteed you're gonna make it super easy to the tournament players, and that's what Matt was keep saying that you don't want to do. But yeah, to some extent they keep doing that easy accessibility. Street Fighter Cross Tekken did it with the jams, Street Fighter Five going back to basic. So what is the mechanic for six? Who knows? Uh, whatever. So like I said, yeah, people went Google Gaga. Me, my thoughts. Well, yeah, I knew it was going to be sort of Street Fighter Six based on the league. I was hoping it was going to be some sort of versus fighting Capcom game, but that was a rumor. There was a rumor that it was going to be some sort of either Capcom All Star or a versus SNK, Capcom versus SNK. But again. 
right now there is no talk about that because SK just released King 5R15. You wanna basically market that for a while before doing a new game. Capcom right now is gonna do Street Fighter 6. Can they still do Capcom vs. SK? Definitely to some extent, but we'll see how it's gonna go. But it is what it is. A lot of people did want Capcom vs. SK3, but that's a different story there. So thoughts about it. It's great. So finally, a rejuvenation of the Street Fighter franchise. Best Park Gates now excited going extremely goo goo gaga uh, yeah a lot of people are just super happy because they know uh, Vesper got tired with Street Fighter 5 after a while he got bored with it and when some people trying to play it online not a lot of people because again they don't like the game that much because it's slow it's easy not challenging whatever but you know it is what it is potato potato each one have their own opinion so but the bottom line is finally a new Street Fighter is going to come and chances are it's going to be probably 2023, 2024 to some extent. And it's probably going to be going to be on the PS5 and Series XS. So I don't think this game is going to be cross-generation by the graphics of they showed. And yeah, you by 2023, you really want to focus on only the new platform, PS5, Series XS. Hopefully, I mean, by the end of 2022, a lot of people can get a PS5, but right now it's still shit because no chips. I mean, you gotta prioritize where the chips is. So, like Sony admitted it, Microsoft admitted it. So, again, it is what it is. There. So, it's great, finally, a new Street Fighter. And the best part for this one is, it is finally after Street Fighter 5 and Street Fighter 2. Yeah, so, if you don't know, uh, credit to the director for Street Fighter 5 is that he basically announced that thanks to the season pass architect, the game as a service, each season actually has a timeline and by season five, it's actually past Street Fighter 3. So that is something interesting, but at the same time could be damage control because of the history of Street Fighter 3. So it is what it is. I mean, again, to some extent that was actually, from what I understand it, a bit of a bonus idea, but I know the director, kind of revolutionized that story so i get props to him there so yeah so great street fighter 6 finally it's out there and then another one they announced is capcom fighting collection basically capcom's arcade fighting game 10 of them 10 of the whatever they select include super street fighter to anniversary collection which is the street fighter it was actually on the street fighter 2 and Technically, it's like all the Street Fighter version into one game, whatever. It is what it is. Pocket Fighter, Dark Stalker, finally on the PS4, Cyberbot, Puzzle Fighter, and the biggest one here is for the first time outside of Japan, Red Earth. This game never came out outside of Japan. We finally did it, so there you go. So now, you're probably gonna buy this mostly because so you wanna play Red Earth. That's probably it. Because Cyberbot's already been out on the Capcom Arcade Cabinet Collection. Of course, on the PlayStation side, there's actually an import PlayStation 1. They actually license that one. Because you don't really need any info, but it's a fighting game with robots. So there you go. But now, for the third time, they're bringing again Cyberbot. But like I said, for that one, you are buying it for Red Earth. So, thought, great, awesome. Another compilation fighting game. Whoopee. I'm getting tired of it. I'm sorry. But it is what it is there. So, yeah. So, in recap, Street Fighter 6, it's now real. It's been announced. More info is going to come in summer of 2022. Probably the game is going to be released somewhere in 2023 at the earliest or 2024 there. So, a lot of the FGC, like I said, they went extremely goo goo gaga. And then now another compilation retro game basically 10 of the best Capcom fighting game to some extent like you might say where's Marvel versus Capcom it's not how come it's not there well you can always buy those one up arcade if you really want those games and maybe you never know maybe there is going to be a Marvel versus Capcom collection imagine that on a disc rather than a one up arcade but whatever I mean I'm good. I played them already. I have all the versions. They're not really fun in the long run. 
just saying. Uh, even Marvel vs. Capcom 3, which is fun. I mean, I like Marvel vs. Capcom 3, and you can still buy that as of right now. Infinite also, but nobody likes that. Whatever. Anyway, I digress. There you go. But again, bottom line is, it's awesome. Capcom, once again, is doing a new fighting game, or the sixth installment of the classic franchise, Street Fighter. And of course, like I said, the collection. Now you can play Red Earth legally. So with that, I'll see you guys later.